Everybody. Hopefully you can hear me okay out there. Um, just trying a little bit different setup as usual, trying to make the webinars as good as we can possibly make them. So hopefully my vocal is okay, and hopefully you can hear my guitar okay. Hey, everybody. It's so awesome that you've joined us. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day or your evening. Um, some of you crazy people you know, join us at three in the morning, which is just, just amazing. Hi there. Um, again, if, if you've never attended a webinar, or you don't know who I am. My name is Steve Stein. Um, I work for a company called Guitar Zoom, and we try and do the best we can to bring you the best um, guitar edu educational materials that we can to, uh, to help you on your way. Hey, guys. Um, it's so awesome. Again, thank you so much for everybody being here. This is just really great. Um, now, before we begin, I just want to remind you that if for some reason you're having a problem, like the stream, the, the internet stream or your network isn't quite working as, as you need, um, hopefully you had seen a video before this, but I'll just give you a couple of quick tips before we get started. Um, try and make sure nobody in your house is like streaming movies and everything like that at the same time that you're trying to watch this webinar. Um, if you can, now that you're already on here, um, you can shut off some, some programs and stuff that are running in the background on your computer, and that might help uh, the, uh, the network stream a little bit, your data, um, you know, Facebook and all those things. It helps to kind of shut all that down if you can. And uh, if you do have problems, there's a reconnect button on the bottom, okay, or somewhere on here. Uh, there's a reconnect button that you can hit that will refresh uh, this so the stream is is more optimal for what it is that you're 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 viewing here So if you have any problems, please hit that. So again, thank you so much for taking time out. This is so awesome Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about uh, Four music theory secrets that every guitarist should know um, if you've gotten to that place in your guitar playing where You're ready to start learning some fundamental elements about music theory um, and please always remember, like for me, music theory is something that, you know, I learned in college and I studied and all that sort of thing. Um, but you don't have to do that. I mean, you don't have to go to college to learn music theory. And there's certainly a lot of music theory that I learned in college that I do not use on a regular basis. So my goal for you is always to learn what's practical. And I always call it real world. What can you use in the real world that's going to benefit you as opposed to just having a lot of useless information running around in your brain. And of course, we all use information differently. So I'm not being offensive to music theory. I love music theory. Some people just go, oh, you know. Um, but here's what I want you to understand, that most of you are probably like me. Um, not that you're short. Uh, most of you are probably <laughs> like me in that music theory comes later, right? Yes, exactly. Tom just said... Um, that music theory was something that he didn't learn until he was older. Thank you, bud. Um, and it's true. Uh, when I first started learning how to play, I learned songs, and then I learned how to do some solos, and I learned, you know, some little tidbits from friends and things like that. This is, of course, long before there was an internet, so I didn't, didn't have that. Um, but I didn't learn music theory until much later. But I got to a place in my playing where I was just doing the same things over and over and over. You know, I'm just playing the same licks and I'm playing the same patterns. And that's when music theory really started helping me. And the other big place that it helped me was when I started playing in bands, doing a wide variety of different styles of music. Um, you know, I played in a, a kind of a classic rock band and then I played in a metal band and I played in a prog band, a prog metal band. And... and um, you know, I, I've played in a whole host of different styles of, of bands before. And the trick is, is that if I can solo really well over ACDC, that doesn't mean I can solo really well over, you know, Highway Star or over Brown Eyed Girl or what, whatever it might be, or even in my songwriting. You know, unless I'm writing the same style of thing over and over and over, sometimes my approach to my soloing or my songwriting itself... Um, I have to kind of step outside my boundaries a little bit, and that's where music theory can become really, really beneficial to you. Again, in a practical sense. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some fundamental things that if you don't know, um, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to learn them. Okay, so remember, if you have any problems, hit the reconnect button. Um, it'll refresh what we're doing here, and um, 
and then you should be able to have a, a more optimal experience with this webinar. So again, let's get started. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much for, for being here. This is just so awesome that you take time out. So uh, I'm going to do the best I can to give you some really great information today. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, you all should have a PDF of this um, four music theory secrets every guitarist should know. And if you don't, um, Matt or somebody will will post it in the, the little uh, sticky in your chat there so you can see that. And then you can download that PDF, okay? So make sure that you, you can get that if you don't already have it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to talk about what's called the automatic chromatic, okay? Now, some of you are thinking, boy, I already know this stuff. And if you do, that's awesome. Please stick with us until we get to the stuff that might help you. But here's what I find with most guitar players is that they dabble in a lot of things, but they never, they, they don't always take those things to the next high level. Just want to make sure everything's working here. Check one, two. You guys can hear me okay? Check, check, check. Looks like everything's good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the chromatic scale is what we call the dictionary of music. It has all the notes and music in it. And knowing the chromatic scale is absolutely essential. It's critical to understanding music theory from here on out. But the other really big purpose that it's going to serve is it enables, uh, enables us to learn the notes on our fretboard. And I would say most people, honestly, kind of know some of the notes on their fretboard. They kind of know where this is and they kind of know where this is but they don't absolutely know where those notes are. And I guarantee you there's something incredibly freeing about being able to look down at your fretboard and know what note you're gonna be playing. And it's not near as hard as people make it out to be. So the first thing we need to do is when you look at this PDF, it's gonna help you a lot. Because sometimes with music theory, the first thing we have to do is understand what it is before we try and actually apply it to something. So the automatic chromatic, the first thing you should be looking at there is it shows a piano. Now, it doesn't matter if you play piano or not. I just want you to understand what notes there are on a piano because those notes are the notes that we all use on every instrument. So here's the, the shortcut I want you to understand is in music, we have a bunch of white keys on the piano and those notes are A, pitch, and pitch, note, tone. Those all mean the same thing. If I say pitch or I say note or I say tone, those all mean the same thing in, in our conversation right now, okay? So if we just start with the, the, the alphabet A, right? And then our musical alphabet is also going to start on A at this point. We have the white notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That's it. There's no H, there's no Q, there's no K, there's nothing like that. There's just the notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And if we thought about those being in a circle, okay, if they were in a circle, we'd go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, over and over and over. So on the piano, when we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, over and over and over across that piano, we're playing what we call octaves. When we go from this A to this A, we've gone an octave. A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G. A, B, C, D, F, G. So on our guitar, we have multiple A's as well. We have different octaves of these notes or multiple B's or whatever it might be. So to, to keep things nice and simplistic for you, and remember, if you have a pencil hand handy, and if you don't, go grab one super quick and come back, but if you've got a pencil, you can always write some notes in your PDF um, if you've printed this off or if you've got a piece of paper sitting there, but it doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, your notes, your prime notes, your prime notes are going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which is where we get various keys and chords and all that kind of thing from. So we're going to get to the sharps and flats too, but the first thing I want you to do, let me see if it's, if it's on here. Okay, good. Um, what I want you to think about here is that when we pluck the sixth string, we're going to come back to this chromatic thing again, but I want you to, to follow me. Um, again, hopefully you have your guitar handy, and if you don't, you could go grab that super quick and come back, okay? But we're going to pluck this sixth string, and we know that this note is E, okay? So what we want to do is we want to figure out how to put those A, B, C, D, E, F, G notes on our guitar. Well, here's the problem. It doesn't go E, F, G, A, B, C. It doesn't do that, okay? There's a problem here, and the problem is we have what's called accidentals, which are sharps or flats. Now, when you look at that chart there in front of you of the chromatic scale, it might look like craziness, but it's really not. Let me explain this in a super easy way for you um, 
and you can use this for, for all your future reference, okay? Here's the deal. Your notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, okay? Those are your white notes. Follow me now, because I'm going to lie, and then I'm going to tell the truth, okay? Every white note gets a little black note next to it. Okay, I'm telling a lie, but just follow me for a second. Every white note gets a little black note next to it. Okay, so if we have the white note A, we have a little black note called A sharp. If we have a white note C, we get a little black note C sharp. If we have the white note G, we get a little black note G sharp. Now, on the guitar, we don't have white and black keys and all that sort of thing. They're just uniform all the way up the guitar. Okay, so if we find G, G sharp is right next to it on the next fret. If we find C, C sharp is right next to it on the next fret. That's how the guitar works. Where the piano works the same way, but they look different because of these big white and little black keys. Okay? Now, what I just told you is only a half truth, but it's also a half lie because every note does not get a sharp. Now, if you look at your chart, you're going to see that B and C, if you look at that chart right there, you're going to see B and C does not get a black key in between. There's no sharp there. Okay, this is music theory. Just like, you know, our English language isn't perfect. There's a lot of strange things like why knife has a K in front of it and all those sorts of things. There are a couple of problems that you just need to accept to be able to understand the bigger picture of what's going on here with music theory. So B to C does not get a sharp. It just doesn't. Okay, now let's understand what a sharp really means. And we'll come back to flats and all that in a second, too. So I'll answer all these questions because I see people are having some questions here. And I'm going to iron all this out, okay? On the piano, a big white key looks more important than a little black key. But it's not. It's not. C and C sharp are two very important notes that we play at any point in time in the music that we play. But the piano had to create a way of, of somebody being able to visually look and feel that these notes were different. Otherwise, you'd, you'd grab a piano and it would all feel exactly the same, right? So the little black keys made it feel differently to somebody while they were playing. It also visually was different because they could see it, right? They could see the difference between those. They could feel it and see it. So whoever came up with the concept of music theory, and music theory is based on uh, you know, physics and all sorts of different things, but um, B and C does not get a sharp. It just doesn't. So we just have to accept the fact that B and C does not get a sharp. The other one that doesn't get a sharp is E to F. And again, on your chart, you're going to see that. There's no such thing as an E sharp. There just isn't. Okay? If you were saying E sharp, what you're really saying is F. Okay, so nobody says E sharp because it's kind of an awkward thing to say. Now, does that mean it's never used in the history of music theory ever, 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 ever? No, 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 no. There's, there's always issues, right? There's always issues with things. But in the big picture, 98% of the time ever when you're, you're doing things, you would call E E and you would call F F. Okay, you don't need to confuse people by calling it E sharp because any music, anybody that knows music theory is going to go E sharp. What are you talking about? Okay, so and they'll they'll understand you're saying you want to raise E up, and that's what you have to understand about the term sharp. Sharp means you're raising something up; it's going up. Flat means it's coming down. Okay, like a flat tire, right? It's going down. So if you look at the first thing on your chart there, and again, I'm not trying to bore you. This stuff is really important, especially for the next thing we're going to do here. Okay, A to B, you'll notice it has an A sharp, which is also called B flat. A sharp and B flat are the same note, the same pitch. You can call it either one, and it doesn't make any difference. If you say A sharp, it's the same as B flat. Okay? Flat means to go backwards. Sharp means to go forward. So you have A and you have B. In between them is A sharp or B flat. Okay? And you can name it either thing. I always tell people the best thing to do is to learn your whole fretboard in terms of sharps. Just get one in your head without confusing yourself. Then you can always go back and you can learn flats or whatever it is that you want to do after that, okay? But try and get it straight in your head. Now, if that makes sense, here's the shortcut I want you to think about, and you can write this down if you've got a pencil and a piece of paper sitting there, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Everybody gets sharps 
except for B and E, which spells the word B. So you can write B E capital and circle that sucker. Okay. Now let me know if this is kind of making sense to you so far. Okay. We have seven notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and they get repeated over and over and over on the piano. These are the white notes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. Okay. A, B, C, D, F, G. When we repeat those every time as we go up the piano, we're, we're creating octaves, but we also have the black notes in between and the black notes do not have to be complicating. There's a black note between everything except B to C and E to F, which spells the word B, B and E. Okay? So A gets a sharp, B does not. C gets a sharp, D gets a sharp, E does not. F gets a sharp, G gets a sharp, and you're done. That's it. You're done. Okay? It looks way more complicating than it is, but that's what it is. Okay? Now, if you have a sharp, that sharp can also be called a flat. A sharp is the same as B flat. If you don't have a sharp, you don't have a flat. If E sharp doesn't exist, F, that's right, F flat doesn't exist. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to understand is the concept. Okay, the concept, A through G, Everybody gets sharps except for B and E. Boom. All music theory. Doesn't matter. If you're figuring out chords and scales and blah, 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 that's the fundamental premise of the chromatic scale. Chromatic just means all the notes in music. It's the dictionary of music. That's what the chromatic scale is. Okay? The chromatic is, again, like our dictionary. The dictionary isn't creating sentences. We only create sentences when we pull words out of the dictionary. Right? We only create scales major scales, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, all that stuff, when we pull notes out of this chromatic scale. We're not there yet. We're just learning the dictionary. Okay? So, cool. Give me a yes. Give me an awesome. Give me a understand if you're getting this. Okay? And if you are, we're going to move on to the next thing. Okay? We're going to apply this sucker to the fretboard, and we're going to get you to expose this fretboard and start learning all your notes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So, I see we've got some good stuff coming in. Good. All right. Let me scroll up a little bit here. So here's the kicker. We're going to take that idea and we're going to apply it to our sixth string. Okay? So on the sixth string, we, again, we're going to go back to this. We know this note is E. Right there, that note is E. So the next note on the guitar, this first fret here, is going to be what? It's going to be F because there is no E sharp. Right? So understand that all these, all these strings don't start on A, right? Music doesn't always start on A. I'm just telling you to start your thought process on the first note of the alphabet, which is A, right? Which makes sense. But that doesn't mean once we start actually making music that A is the note that we're always going to start on. We can start on C or G or D or F sharp or whatever we want. Those notes aren't going to change. Those 12 notes are not going to change, right? Those white notes and the black notes. Those 12 notes are not going to change, okay? It's just what are we choosing out of that to start with? Well, in the sixth string, we're choosing to start with E. So the first fret is F. And you probably already knew that, but that's what it is. It's not E sharp, because there is no E sharp. The second fret is F sharp, because F does get a sharp, so this is F sharp. So for the rest of your life, this note is F sharp. G. What's the next one? G sharp, right? You know, think about it. We're on G sharp, so the next note's got to be A. Because we got to start all over again. There's nothing past G sharp. It just starts all over. Remember the circle? It just goes in a circle. So this is A. There's no H, right? F, G, H. There's no such thing. So we went E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And, of course, A gets a sharp, so here it is, A sharp. Here's B. B doesn't get a sharp, so it goes directly to C on the eighth fret. C sharp. D. D sharp. Now get this. At the twelfth fret with the two dots is E. Zero was E. Twelfth fret with two dots is E. That's why it has two dots. It's telling you you've gone an octave. So 0 and 12 are the same thing. Those are E's. 
which means 1 and 13 are both the same thing, which are Fs. Remember, there's no such thing as E sharp. 14 and 2 are the same. Those are both F sharps. 15 and 3 are the same. Those are both Gs. And you'll notice that the dots line up from here, just like they did here. Okay? So what we're going to focus on right now are from the 12th fret on down. That's what we're going to focus on. And I'm going to give you a bunch of different little tips for you to practice. Um, now, all this stuff is covered in a course that I offer. It's called Music Theory Made Easy. Music Theory Made Easy. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that course a little bit later. But um, I want to give you some of the entry-level ideas to music theory, and then that course will take you in a, in a far superior place with all of these sorts of things. But um, let's just get started with this. So 0 to 12, we have 12 notes. 0 to 12 are the notes that we're talking about. Now here's the problem is I, I would teach this to people all the time and go, okay, so E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, and so on. And I'd say, write that down. And of course you have it on your PDF. And then I'd go, okay, go ahead and memorize that. And then when you've got that memorized, we're going to practice that next week. So my student would go home, and then they'd come back the next week, right? And we'd be sitting together, and I'd say, okay, well, let's, let's review your notes, right? So I'm going to say a note, and I want you to find it on the guitar. So I'd say, okay, find B, and they'd go, and they'd count up and find B. Then I'd say, okay, find D, and then they'd count up, and they'd find D, okay? That's relative knowledge, but it's not absolute knowledge. And we can't use relative knowledge when we're in a pinch or we're nervous or whatever. We need absolute knowledge, right? If the dog is chasing us and he's got really big teeth, we know instinctively to hightail it out of there and run away, right? So it's not a relative, well, what should I do? Hmm, let me ponder. I, I don't, you don't have time for that. You got to get the crap out of there before he bites your, your feet off. You know what I mean? So the thing about this theory stuff is, is if we're going to use it, we got to learn it absolutely. So what I want to teach you is a little trick, if you don't already know this, to learning your notes on your guitar to make this much, much, much easier. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a step back and we're going to pull all the sharps and flats out. We're going to pull them all out. And we're just going to memorize the prime notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G on the guitar. So E is zero. F is 1. Now let me ask you, it's a silly question, but where's E? 0. Where's F? 1. Okay? You've already learned a percentage of your fretboard right there, and it's that easy. E is 0, F is 1. You're done. Right? So even if you only did E and F today for an hour, which it wouldn't take you an hour because you've already learned them, right? I'm going to tell you a quick story here. Just a stupid story. When I was a kid... I was in like 10th grade, 9th grade, something like that. Um, and I had a science teacher, a biology teacher, and I remember him calling me out in class and he goes, hey Stein, what does myo mean, M-Y-O? And I went, I don't know. He goes, it means muscle. Myo means muscle. Okay. So the next day I go to class and he goes, hey Stein, what does myo mean? Muscle. And he did that every day for like... <laughs> He would just pick on me, but every day he would say that. He'd go, hey, Stein, what does myo mean? And I'd go, muscle. So now here I am many, many, many years later, and I still remember that myo means muscle. Okay? So I don't know anything else, but I remember that myo means muscle. So my point is, you know E is 0 and F is 1. You just do. E is 0, F is 1. Well, F sharp was 2. G is 3. G is 3. This is G. Third fret is G. It just is. Now, you might have dots on your guitar. You might not have dots on your guitar. Dots are always nice because they help you to visually see, just like white and black keys, they help you to visually see where you are. So if you have a guitar that has no dots whatsoever, um, that can make things a little more difficult. But And you could always mark them with, you know, like a piece of tape or something like that. But hopefully you've got those dots on your guitar. So this dot right here, this third fret, you'll notice I don't have a dot at the first fret, and most guitars don't. Doesn't mean that all don't. Sometimes they do. Uh, but this third fret is G. E, F, G. So here's what you do is you take, you know, if you've got a friend or a, a relative or somebody who's living with you, a wife, husband, child, dad, mom, whatever it is, okay, and you have them quiz you. 
Now, this quiz is going to get a little bigger, but right now, your quiz is, um, they might ask you, what's at the third fret? And you say G. What's at the first fret? You say F. What's at the zero fret? You say E. So it, it's that easy, okay? Or they might say, where's G? And you say third fret. Where's E? Zero fret. Where's F? First fret. You see how I did that? There's two different things you can do. Have them ask you the fret number and you tell them what, what the name of the note is. Or they say, ask you the name of the note and you tell them the fret number. Practice both those things with somebody. Okay? Anybody. They don't have to know anything about guitar. They just, you're just going to tell them the frets that you want them to yell out. Or you're going to tell them the notes that you want them to yell out. Okay? So let's keep going and finish that up. So E, F, G. A is at the fifth fret. It's a dot. B is at the seventh fret. It's a dot. Seeing a trend here? So, F, G, A, B, 1, 3, 5, 7. F, G, A, B, 1, 3, 5, 7. And then E is 0. So, where's B? 7. Where's G? 3. Where's A? 5. Where's F? 1, right? Okay? So, up to this point, you've learned over half your fretboard. Because remember, it just repeats at 12. So, we're just going up to 12 here. You've already learned half your fretboard in like five minutes, right? F, G, A, B, one, three, five, seven. Okay? Now, we know that B doesn't get a sharp, though. So here's where the little hiccup is, is uh, C is at eight, which is not a dot. Now, that should define for you right there. The dots are not on the guitar to, to be compatible with A and B and C. They're just on there as markers. So C is at the eight and D is at the ten, which surrounds this ninth fret here. So C and D surround this dot. They're not on this dot. They surround this dot. Okay? I had a, a student, this little girl, many, many years ago, if you haven't heard me tell this story, she called these rabbit ears because I always did this. So I've always thought about these two notes, C and D, as being rabbit ears, 8 and 10. Okay? So F, G, A, B, C, and D. F, G, A, B, C, and D. 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. And you've learned the sixth string. In less than 10 minutes, you've learned the sixth string. Okay? So now you could have somebody quiz you and say, where's D? 10. Where's B? 7. Where's A? 5. Where's F? 1. And it's going to take a little while. Okay? But I guarantee you, if you thought about this, and this is music theory, guys, so you have to understand that music theory takes some time. You have to understand what you want. Then you have to apply what you've learned. Otherwise, it's a concept out here in space that you can't actually use. What's the point of that? Learn to use it to better yourself as a guitar player. That's the point. That's always the point. Okay? To just learn things to learn them can be fun, and it can be inspiring, but it's not very useful. We want to make this useful for you. Okay? So, F, G, A, B, C, and D. Now, if you just learned 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10... Okay? And you spent one day, two days, three days, a week, whatever you want. Okay? Because I guarantee you that there's many of you out there that probably haven't learned, absolutely learned all the notes on your fretboard. You could figure them out, relative, give me some time, blah, blah, blah. But you don't know them absolutely. This is the trick to learning the fretboard absolutely, all the notes on your guitar. Okay? So let's say you even took a week and you just had somebody quiz you, F, G, A, B, C, and D, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. Okay? Once you learn those, you already know where your sharps and flats are because they exist in between those. If this is F and G, F sharp is in between. G flat is in between. Don't muck your brain up with all the sharps and flats right now. Take them out of there. Forget them. Once you absolutely know where F is, you know where F sharp is. Once you absolutely know where C is, you know where C sharp is. Once you absolutely know where A is, you know where A flat is because you move back one. G sharp. A flat, same note. Remember, that's called an N harmonic. G sharp and A flat are the same pitch. You can call it either one. Okay? N harmonic means it's the same note with two different names. G sharp, A flat. Okay? So you'd be able to learn your sixth string in no time flat. Okay? Well, let's take a look here. In your, your PDF, okay, you'll see those notes listed. Um, it says, there's a little chart there on, I think it's the first page here. It says, six string natural notes on the tab staff. And it says 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. And then 12, of course, which is the octave. 0, E, 12, E. Okay? Now, look at the fifth string. 
on the next page, it says notes on the fifth string. Now, I don't want you to move on to this until you have absolutely learned the notes on the sixth string because I don't want you to get confused. You're not running a race here, and please always remember that, okay? If, you're, if you've been playing for six months or a year or two years or five years or ten years or whatever it is, and you still don't absolutely notes, know the notes on your guitar, this is life-changing because you could really do this. Even if it took you six months, even if it took you a year, for the rest of your life, from the rest of your guitar playing career, you'd know the notes on your guitar. All the time you've spent not learning them, here's your opportunity to do it. But to try and do it too fast is just going to cause problems. So don't do that, okay? Once you've learned the notes on your sixth string, you're going to notice on that chart there on the notes on the fifth string that it works exactly the same way, except the fifth string, of course, starts with the note A. So we would learn the prime notes, which is written on the little chart right below that on the PDF there. But A would be zero. B would be on two this time, not one, because we have A sharp. So B is on two, C is on three, D is on five, E is on seven, and get this, F and G surround the ninth fret. You got rabbit ears again here, okay? So F and G surround that. So once you're ready for the fifth string, you would do exactly the same thing on the fifth string, you, except you'd have to remember that B is at the second fret, not the first fret. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You memorize those notes, okay? Once you've got those absolutely memorized, then you know where the sharps and the flats are relative to those as well. Then you could move to the fourth string and the third string and so on. Now, I didn't chart all those out because it's the same thing over and over and over. It's just you have to know what note it is, right? You have to know your fourth string is D and your third string is G. And if you don't know those, you should, you, needless to say, you should know those, right? If you're going to try and learn any sort of music theory, you need to know the names of your strings anyway, right? But once you learn that starting pitch, you've got all of this taken care of. So it's pretty, pretty darn cool. So give me a heck yeah if that makes sense to you. If that's useful to you, please let me know. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So it looks like everybody's understanding the idea. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to rush through this. We got a lot of stuff to talk about to give you just some basic ideas of how music theory works. You now understand the chromatic scale. And you now understand how to apply that chromatic scale in a real world, functional way to the notes on your guitar, to the strings on your guitar, excuse me. And you don't have to be in any hurry. Okay. Now, there is another little thing I want to show you on your PDF there, and we'll finish this little segment up here. Um, in this first uh, section, it's called, it says A across the fretboard. And what this does is it shows you kind of a cheater little uh, visual of where all the A's would be and how you could memorize those across the guitar. So what I want you to understand here is what we're talking about is cross-referencing. Okay, once you learn the notes on the sixth string, absolutely learn them and you learn the notes on the fifth string, you're going to start noticing that there's some cross-reference, right? When I pluck the fifth string, or excuse me, the sixth string, fifth fret, it's A. Now, it isn't marked on your, your sheet, although it should be, um, but A is open. That's an A. And we know that because we tune that way, right? You've probably learned how to tune from the fifth fret like that, but that's why it works. Okay? Then we also know that A is up here on the 12th fret. Okay? Which works really well. That way you can kind of cross-reference those notes. But there's a really neat thing that you can do here with this A, and here's what I want to show you. This A is also existing at the 7th fret of the 4th string. And those two are called octaves. So no matter where you go, visually those two are always going to be octaves. And you've probably noticed that from playing, you know, power chords or pentatonic scales or whatever it is that you've done before, that these two notes are octaves. Well, so is this one. That's another octave. And you know that because this string is E and this string is E. So if this is A, well, so is this. So a lot of this stuff you've probably done before, but maybe you've never just kind of put it in a sequential thought process and went, oh, okay, so I kind of know this. So what you can do is you can use this chart to sort of memorize where all your A's are. And then, of course, if I memorize that those are A's, like on your chart there, well, then if I move up a fret, those are all A sharps. If I move up another one, those are all B's. And I can find that relative to the note that I'm starting on in the sixth string. So 
it's a great way of being able to visualize all the, the notes that you're looking for at the time across your fretboard. It's not a replacement or a substitution for learning the notes on your, on your strings, okay? And let's be honest, these top two strings, the sixth string and the fifth string, are, are by far the two most important strings to learn all your notes on because that's where your scales come from or your chords or whatever it is that you're doing. I'm not saying the other four aren't important. They sure are. But these two are the ones to really get going on. That way, if you're jamming with somebody and somebody says, hey, play me an F sharp chord, you don't go, ah, right? You can go, oh, okay, here. Or here. Because I know the, the notes on my two strings. Or where's C sharp? Okay. C sharp or there's C sharp. Right? And then major or minor or whatever else you'd want from there. So uh, if that makes sense, what we're going to do then is we're going to move on to the next thing, which is really, really important. Okay? We're going to start learning this major scale. Okay? So make sure you've got your guitar. Make sure you've got a pencil handy if you need to write anything down. And let's go ahead and dig in. So what we need to understand about the major scale is that the chromatic scale gave us all 12 notes. It was the dictionary of music. Okay? The major scale is where all of our chords and soloing and songwriting and all those things come from that major scale. So we need to understand what is a major scale. Well, again, major scale is what we call the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do scale. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out certain notes from this scale this chromatic scale, and we're going to create this major scale, or what we call a diatonic scale, which is seven different notes, okay? Um, we're going to create this scale out of that. So, what we're going to do here is, on your sheet, you can kind of see, um, the, what I want you to do is I want you to go to, this is number two here, the, ma the scale of major importance. We're going to C major with spread fingering, okay? Find that little chart there. It says C major with spread fingering, okay? Now, a major scale consists of what we call whole steps and half steps. A whole step is when we move, for instance, from F to G. That's a whole step. F to F sharp would be a half step. So two half steps, of course, equals a whole step. So a major scale consists of having half steps and whole steps in the right places. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a, an example here with this C major with spread fingering. And I'll explain what spread fingering means if you don't know. And then I'm going to give you the, the shortcut, the brain shortcut here. Okay? So if we were going to play the key of C, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to C on the 8th fret, which we now know where that is because we've been memorizing that. And we're going to play the notes C, D, and E. Okay? Now, if you know anything about music theory, you know that the key of C has no sharps and no flats. Now, Music Theory Made Easy is going to get into far more detail as to why it doesn't have sharps or flats and how it relates to all the other keys and all those sorts of things. We don't have time for all that on, on the webinar here, but what I do want to do is explain to you how this works. Okay? So, C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. So, a major scale is built off of a whole step and then another whole step. Okay? C, D, E. Now, C major, for those of you that know a little bit about music theory, C major doesn't get any sharps and flats. The key of C doesn't get any sharps or flats, okay? And again, there's a reason why and all that sort of thing, which we can, we can explore, explore further in Music Theory Made Easy. But for now, just uh, um, believe me that the key of C doesn't get any sharps or flats. That's why I'm using it, because it's a little bit easier. So C to D, D to E. Now, you'll notice my fingering here. I'm using my first finger on C, my middle finger on D, and my pinky on E. This is what people often refer to as a spread fingering, okay? Because I've got my fingers spread out, okay? It's not a clarinet thing or a saxophone thing. It's a guitar term, spread fingering. So I'm playing C, D, E. The next string, I've got F, G, A. No sharps, no flats. C, D, E, F, G, A. Next string, E, C. So I'm playing from C to C. I'm not playing any sharps or flats. I'm playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So go ahead and practice that with me. C, D, E. Same shape on the next one. F, G, A, and then B, C. Now I could keep going across the guitar playing these same notes or go over here and play these same notes or over here and play these same notes. That's a whole other conversation, right? We're just learning what this is. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Don't play the fuss with it. Okay? Now, 
In playing that, what I want to show you, though, is the whole steps and half step configuration. Then I'm going to show you the shortcut, the cheater, okay? So we have whole step, whole step, and then here we're on E, E to F is only a half step, okay? C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a half step, we know that, so we can see it right there, E to F, F to G is a whole step, G to A is a whole step, A to B is a whole step, and then B to C is a half step. So when I was in college, I was learning like whole step, whole step, and you might have heard of this before, but whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's what we called it. And I always thought, man, that's a lot of stuff to try and memorize and then confuse. So here's what I did in my brain is I just thought half steps are between the third and fourth notes and the seventh and eighth or seventh and first. Remember, eight and one are, the, are an octave of each other, C and C. So I don't care if you call it one or you call it eight. It's the, same note. So my half step is between three and four and seven and eight. That's where my half steps are. That's it. So no matter where I go on the guitar, half steps are going to be between three and four and seven and eight. Now the whys and the hows and how this works in all these other keys is going to be discussed in Music Theory Made Easy, but this is what I want you to start thinking about. So we have one, two, three, four. Here's our half step. Five, six, seven, eight. Here's our half step. Okay? So now we could take that and move it anywhere we want. If we wanted to be in the key of G, we'd just move that same shape down and we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's what makes the guitar so awesome is, and you probably know this from some of the scales that you've played before too, but you just move the shape around, right? And that's the beauty of knowing the notes on your sixth string is if you want to be in the key of G, you know where G is on the sixth string. So you go down there, you play this scale. If you want to be in the key of F, you move down, you play this scale. Now, there are many other scales, and there's in Music Theory Made Easy, we're going to talk about lots of different scales, but in this webinar, we only have an hour. I'm not going to waste your time trying to talk too deep about a million things. I want to get you an overview of how this works, okay? And at the end, I'm going to wrap this up to um, something that you're probably already familiar with. So, that's how the C major scale is created. Now, we did C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And the shortcut that you want to memorize is that whenever we're talking about a major scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, the major scale, which is where your chord progressions and all that sort of thing come from, okay? I know some of you are, because I've seen a couple of people ask about the minor scale. The minor scale, and this is the big twist that you'll learn in Music Theory Made Easy, is that the minor scale is really just a major scale, but it's just the way that you're looking at it. And this is iconically important to learning your fretboard. When I was in college and I was learning about the major scale and how to play it and all that sort of thing on, in theory and then on my fretboard and all that stuff, and I came across the concept of modes. If you guys have heard of modes before, I almost quit playing guitar because I was like, well, trying to learn the key of G and then the key of D and then the key of A and then the key of C, and now all of a sudden we got to do modes for all these things. i got to learn like you know 7,000 different scales. I'm never going to be able to do this. And... I don't remember if I figured it out, if our friend showed it to me or whatever happened, but there's a bunch of really, really important shortcuts to go, no, 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 no. It's all the same thing. Everything about music theory is based off that major scale. Even exotic scales are based off the major scale. Minor scales are based off the major scale. Modes are based off the major scale. Everything is based off the major scale. That's why we have to learn that major scale. And please understand, when I was a kid, when I was learning all this stuff, I was huge into metal and hard rock and all that. Nobody played in major. Like R.E.M. played in major, right? Country music played in major. Metallica didn't play in major. So I was always like, well, why do I got to learn major? I don't need major. I need minor. That's where all the stuff that I listen to is. Music theory, you got to learn your major scale to learn what minor is or what harmonic minor is or what anything else is. You got to learn your major scale first, okay? So that's why you started with the chromatic, applied it. And now you're learning that a major scale is a series of whole steps and half steps. And the shortcut is half steps are between three and four and seven and eight. And apply it to your fretboard. Okay? So hopefully I'm not freaking anybody out yet. Hopefully you're all with me. Okay? So let's see here. I'm going to do one more here. Okay? And then we're just going to we're gonna take a quick break and I'm going to tell you a little bit about music theory made easy. Okay? And please remember, if you got to reconnect it all... Um, 
hit that refresh or that reconnect button so if you're having issues with anything. Okay, thanks guys. I'm getting a lot of great responses here that you guys are getting this, that this is making sense to you. Um, I had Brad actually just mention that for the first time he's understanding how his fretboard is actually working and, and he's been playing for six years, so this is perfect, okay? Um, and I also want to mention to you guys too, if I haven't already mentioned this, that just for attending this webinar, you're going to get a free uh, bonus. Uh, my buddy Dan, who runs Guitar Zoom, is going to be giving you essential ear training, it's called, which is going to tie all of this stuff into an ear training element too, which is really great. So you get that just for attending the bonus, and I'll, I'll explain to you how to do that in just a little bit here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this C major scale, and I'm going to blow your minds if you've never done this before. We're going to take those notes, and we're going to apply chords to each one of those notes, and then you're going to be able to move that anywhere you want to go on the fretboard too, okay? Now, a chord means you're playing a bunch of notes at the same time, okay? That's the, the general term of it, okay? So what happens is, when you play a chord, you're playing what we call the first note, or the root, the third note, and the fifth note. So for instance, if I'm on C, and I want to play a C chord, my notes are C, the notes I'm playing when I play the C chord, the C major chord, okay? I'm playing the notes C, E, and G. So all chords are based off three pitches initially, okay? We call it a triad. It's the first note, which is the root, the third note, and the fifth note, okay? And you could just count up from the note that you're on. One, two, whoop, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, five, one, two, five. So chords are always built off the root, the third, and the fifth. Those three notes, okay? You can hear that when I do that, okay? So, here's the shortcut though. Even if you don't understand what a, what a triad is and what the notes are and blah, 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 here's the shortcut. Is if you're in the key of C major, you get seven different notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, E. And then the octave. You get seven different notes. Well, that scale is going to generate seven different chords. You're going to get seven different chords. C, G, A, E, and then seven. Each one of those notes is going to generate a chord. Okay? Some of those chords, and this is what we're going to go into in Music Theory Made Easy, but some of those chords are going to be major. Some of those chords are going to be minor. And Music Theory Made Easy is going to explain to you why that happens and how to know when it's going to happen and how to change things whenever you need to and all those sorts of things. But I'm going to give you the shortcut, okay? The shortcut is whenever you're in a major scale, whether you're in C major, or you're in G major, or you're in F sharp major, or you're in F major, okay? Moving that thing around, the first chord in a major scale is always major. So C major is going to get a C major chord. Now I'm playing six strings, but I'm only playing the notes C, E, G over and over and over in this chord. That's all that's happening. Okay? This note here is C. This note here is G. This note here is C. This is E. This is G. And this is C. Now, on any instrument, the notes don't have to be in that order, but those notes are occurring. So in this C major scale, my first chord is C. In a G major scale, my first chord is G. In an F major scale, my first chord is F. It seems pretty obvious. It's the next ones that you really need to learn. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to visualize, really visualize C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Visualize those. And we're going to literally create chords off the top of these. And then I'm going to give you another shortcut. So C major. If you move up to the D note and you create a chord there, the second chord in any key is going to wind up being minor. Now, we don't, have, we don't have time to talk about why major and why minor and seventh and ninth and all those things. Those are going to get discussed in Music Theory Made Easy. But I want you to understand is in any major scale, G major, F major, C major, D major, anywhere you want to go, the first chord is always major, the second chord is always minor. Okay? You got to take my word for it because I'm not lying to you, okay? If you want to learn the whys and the hows, you got to study a little bit further. But the first chord in any key is always major. The second chord is always minor. The third chord, which in the key of C would be 
C is going to be minor as well. So the first chord is major, second chord is minor, third chord is minor. Okay, and I'm going to give you a shortcut in a minute. Fourth chord, which in this case is F, is going to be major. Fifth chord is G, which is also going to be major. And you can see this in your PDF as well. And your sixth chord is going to be minor. Now, by this point, some of you I can already see you're saying, that's too fast, you're going too fast. Let me give you the shortcut. Here's the shortcut. When you're in a major key, G major, D major, C major, whatever key you want to be in, F sharp major, I don't care what key you're in, the first, the fourth, and the fifth chords in that key, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, four, five. When you're in a major scale or a major key, the first, fourth, and fifth chords are always major, always major. One, four, five is always major. And some of you that have studied music theory or know anything about blues, you go, hey, blues is based off one, four, five. Yeah, that's right. It's three major chords. One, four, five. Okay? Now, don't keep getting sucked back to, well, what about minor? What about minor? Minor isn't, minor and modes and all those sorts of things are way, 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 way easier than you think they are. But they're going to require more time than I have in this webinar to explain it all. But please understand that all of those conversations still stem from this major scale. So if you learn the major scale, you learn the chords of the major scale, all of those sorts of things, when you start looking at minor or modes or anything like that, it's going to make way more sense to you. Believe me, because that's where I went wrong. Okay? So we've got major, two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor. So your shortcut is one four five in a major key is always major. Two three six in a minor key. Or excuse me, sorry, I had a brain explosion there. Two three six in a major key is always minor. One four five is always major. Two three six is always minor. They just are. Okay, one four five is major. 2, 3, 6 is minor. So if you were in the key of G major, you were writing a song in the key of G major, or you were going to jam Brown Eyed Girl that's in the key of major or G major or Wonderful Tonight that's in the key of G major or whatever it is, okay? You have now built this half step and whole step scale. And you know that 1 is major, 2 is minor, 3 is minor, 4 is major, 5 is major, and 6 is minor. Okay, now that does leave us one more chord, which is the seventh chord. Uh, let's go back up to the key of C so I don't confuse anybody. Okay, so C, E, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A. I'm going to actually put this B over here instead of here so it's a little bit easier for you to play on the guitar. Okay, so we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay. B, the seventh chord in any major key, is what we refer to as diminished. Now, Diminishes its own crazy little beast. It's not major, it's not minor, it's something completely different. And the thing about diminished is, I'm going to be completely honest with you, diminished is not as important as major and minor chords. It's just not. If you think about all the songs that you've learned in your life, how many times do you see diminished? And say maybe, hey, I've played a diminished before. Sure you have. But you don't play it near as much as you do major and minor chords. Not even, not even close. And most of the time in pop music, and when I say pop, I mean blues or rock or anything, anything that's popular, not classical music, really. When we use the new chord, most of the time we're using it incorrectly anyway, in, in theory. We're not just using it as we're showing it right here. We use it as a substitution and all kinds of crazy things. So my point is, when you play a major scale like what we're learning now, you have six extremely important, useful chords that you can think about. Okay? If you were playing... Um, Last Kiss by Pearl Jam, which is G, E minor, C, D. G is the one chord. E minor is the six chord, which is minor. C is the four. D is the five. You could look at that song and go, oh, now I, I've played it before, but now I understand why the chords are the way they are. You could do that with just tons of songs. You could look at Wonderful Tonight, which is G, D, C, D, which is the one, the five, the four, the five. And then later in the song, it goes to an E minor somewhere in there. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah somewhere in there it goes to an E minor. I think it does. Um, but the point is, is that all these songs that you've played a million times, now all of a sudden you can look at them with a different uh, set of goggles on and go, oh, so they are using this music theory. Now, does every song on the planet use music theory? No. Okay? It doesn't apply to everything, but it applies to a lot of things. Okay? With your songwriting, with learning songs, with understanding how you're going to solo over something, all those different kind of things, you can see how beneficial this can become. Okay? So, let me finish up this idea here. So, we have the last chord, which is the diminished. So, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So, if you go to the 14th fret, and you can look at your chart there for this picture, you're going to play 14, 15, 14, 15. That's a diminished chord. It's a really fun chord to play, but not a very useful chord to use on a daily, real-world basis. Okay? So, if this is kind of making sense to you, and it's exciting you a little bit in that you really could get this. Okay, you could start understanding this fundamental bridge between the things that you know and how they're actually working. Number one, to understand how the songwriting works or how you're going to approach soloing or what scale you're going to use over a particular situation or what minor means or what a mode is or all these different things that you can actually encounter. Um, my buddy Dan, obviously Dan Denley, is going to explain this to you a little bit in a quick video that just kind of tells you about music theory made easy to see if it's something that you're interested in. And if it's not, don't worry about it. But if it is, this might really take you to the next level with understanding and kind of getting a grip on how all this stuff works. Hey, Dan Denley here, founder of GuitarZoom.com and the IGPA. This video is different from what you're expecting because it's not a sales pitch. It's just here to help you make a decision. Because I respect you and your time, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I'm just going to show you what Music Theory Made Easy is and what it can do for you. In Module 1, you're going to learn a simple way to memorize the seven notes of the musical alphabet so you can start reading music and chord charts. One must-know chord trick that'll help you visualize the fretboard. How the same note can be played on multiple strings so you have the freedom to play in any position, what the chromatic, diatonic, and pentatonic scales are, and how they're all related. In Module 2, you'll discover the whole half-step formula for playing major scales in any key, the critical difference between pentatonic and diatonic scales, so you can play killer licks and solos over any song, one easy way to memorize the most important key signatures for guitar and which ones you can ignore, how to play the major scale in closed and spread finger position so you have total flexibility. In Module 3, you'll discover what makes chords major, minor, or diminished, and how to play them all. How to play the seven positions of the major scale, which means you'll quickly master all seven modes. How to play the three note power chords across a fretboard. A simple trick to create any chord you want, any time you want from scratch. In module four, you'll discover one easy shortcut to learn chord inversions fast, so you can add color and contrast to boring chord progressions. How sus and add chords are really simple chords with a few altered or added notes. How to play seventh, ninth, and eleventh chords, which are crucial for blues and rock guitar. In module 5, you'll discover the caged chord system, how it works, and why it works so well. So you can skyrocket your rhythm and lead guitar playing. One easy way to play any major chord anywhere on the guitar neck. How to quickly navigate interval shapes on the fretboard. So you can play any chord you need, even if you haven't memorized all the positions. In module 6, you'll jump into a complete note-for-note -note breakdown of each mode and how they're related to the major scale. So you can start playing modes with confidence. Simple shortcuts for understanding which chords are best for each mode. A quick and easy way to choose the right mode every time. So you never hit a bad note when you're soloing. In Module 7, you'll discover how to put all your theory knowledge to use in real-world playing situations, so you can play your favorite songs faster and start soloing with confidence. An easy guide on how to write your own songs from scratch. And you get an easy-to-follow plan so you can continue getting better even after you complete the training, so you can reach your goals and always make progress. You get seven modules of step-by-step -step music theory training from Professor Steve Stein, who's known as the world's most sought-after guitar instructor. He's famous for his almost magical ability to quickly help guitarists overcome obstacles and rapidly advance their playing to a level they never dreamed possible without having to practice long hours, boring drills, or even knowing how to read music. He's literally helped millions of guitarists in over a hundred countries. He holds a bachelor's degree in music education from Minnesota State University at Moorhead, and he's played lead guitar in dozens of bands touring the U.S. and the U.K. And he's been helping guitarists quickly achieve their goals for over 25 years. He's a featured guest instructor at Guitar World magazine. And just one of his YouTube videos has over 2.1 million views. 
He's also the distinguished former professor of modern guitar studies at North Dakota State University. The bottom line, Steve is considered the world's leading guitar instructor because his students see real, noticeable improvements in their playing fast. So let's wrap this up. You get the complete six-hour Music Theory Made Easy course by Steve Stein. It's completely online, so you can watch it anytime, and all the videos are mobile-friendly, which means you can watch them on virtually any mobile device, including your phone, iPad, or tablet, so you can log in and pick up some sweet tips and tricks anywhere, anytime, 24-7, whenever it's convenient for you. Plus, if you're one of the first 50 to order today, you also get Exotic Guitar Scales 101 by Steve Stein and my course, Making sense of modes. And as a webinar special bonus, when you order by midnight, you get Using Arpeggios in a Melodic Way by Steve Stein. You also get these courses as a special bonus. The Pentatonic Scale and Trills, 23 Hot Pull-Offs, 38 Jam Tracks, the complete tab book, as well as the quick start guide and progress tracker for the Music Theory Made Easy course. You also get unlimited access to the Guitar Zoom private Facebook community, a $67 per year value. So you'll never be alone in your guitar playing journey, and you'll always have the support of the entire Guitar Zoom family. So here's everything you get the six hour Music Theory Made Easy course by Steve Stein, Exotic Guitar Skills 101, Making Sense of Modes, Using Arpeggios in a melodic way, pentatonic scale and trills, 23 hot pull-offs, 38 jam tracks, the complete tab transcription in downloadable PDF format for each course, as well as the quick start guide and progress tracker, plus lifetime access to the private Facebook community, a total value of $677. Of course, at $677, we realize that a lot of people will get left out, so you won't pay even half that. Not 400, not 300, not even 200. Your investment for the entire Music Theory Made Easy course is just three payments of only $39.95 or a one and done payment of $117. That's less than one trip to the grocery store. Of course, you're covered by a 60 day 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means that if you're not happy, just let us know for a fast, friendly refund no receipt required, and no questions asked. So if your gut is saying, yes, this will help you, then listen to it. Grab your copy of Music Theory Made Easy now so you can secure all the bonuses and the discounted price because the fast action bonuses and discount expire soon. Plus, you can't get better if you keep doing the same old things over and over again. Click the button on your screen now to get started. Okay, so hopefully that kind of explains things a little bit better to you. I know you've been on this call for quite a while or on this webinar for, for quite a while, and I don't want to take up any more time than I, 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 I just want to help you a little bit with this stuff and see if, it, if it's working for you. I'm getting a lot of really great responses from everybody, so thank you so much for that. Um, so if you're interested in purchasing this, there's going to be a Learn More button that you can see there, and you can click on that, and you're going to get more information about this and then you can decide whether or not you want to buy it or not or anything like that um there's a 60 day money back guarantee as always with any guitar zoom product so you always have the option of returning it if it's not working out for what you need um but i'm telling you this is a great place to go with your playing if you haven't already explored some of these things it's worth your time believe me to start making some sense of what's going on here instead of always kind of being in the dark with just shapes and and things like that start take the next step you know what i mean and if you do happen to purchase today on this webinar, um, you're going to get a bunch of bonuses too. Um, I don't know what Tom and and, and uh, Dan have got in store for you, but I know there's a bunch of bonuses that you get, but it's only exclusive to this webinar. So when this is over and the time runs out, you won't get them anymore. So please click on the Learn More button. Um, also, if you want the attendee bonus, if you click on the Learn More button and scroll all the way down, there'll be the download link for you to get that attendee bonus. So you click on the Learn More button, scroll all the way down, it'll be on that page. So please take advantage of this. I, I know there's a discounted price today for Music Theory Made Easy, for dur again, during this webinar. Um, and please always remember that we are here to help you. That's what we do, okay? Um, yes, we have to make money to pay our bills and keep the lights on, but but in the process, our job is always to try and make sure that we are helping you with exactly what it is that you need to to get yourself to the next level and just help you along the way. Remember the Facebook community page that you can sign up for um, and ask questions. It's a positive, wonderful community to be a part of. Um, 
there's just a bunch of really awesome people in there. We keep the conversations positive. We keep the conversations encouraging. It's not a place for people to go on there and get all cocky and, you know, troll and all that other crap. That is not what we are into here at Guitar Zoom. The goal is, I don't care if you've played guitar for three months or three days or three years or 30 years, the goal is to be encouraging and to help each other um, to to achieve our goals and look at other people and encourage them and lift them up. That's what we do here. So the last thing I want to do before we, uh, we close this out is I want to show you the last part, which is a slice of pentatonic pie. And what I want to do for those of you that know about the pentatonic scale, I want to relate this diatonic thing that we're talking about, this major scale, back to the pentatonic. So what I'm going to do is we've been learning the spread fingering here. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those notes and I'm going to convert them over to this side over here. So I'm going to play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, I'm starting on C, but you can see, obviously, I can play B and I can play A. And again, I'm on the PDF. I don't know what page this is exactly, but I'm on the a slice of pentatonic pie is what I'm on. Okay? So A, B are notes we can play too, but we got to remember C is our prime note, right? That's the one. If I'm playing just trying to solo, that's the note I'm targeting as I play. So I can play A and B, but C is the note I'm targeting. So my notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, E. Now, people are always asking, well, how does pentatonic fit into all this music theory stuff? Well, here's the deal. Diatonic has seven notes, seven different notes. Pentatonic has five different notes. Penta meaning five, tonic meaning the root, pentatonic, okay? Pentatonic. So we're moving from um, seven notes to five notes. So we're going to take two of those notes. We're going to kick them out the door. We're, we're throwing them out. And again, the reason why is a little bit more complicating, but what happens is the two notes that we're throwing out the door are the notes that are really specific to certain scales, certain modes, things like that. And again, you'll get into all of that with music theory made easy. But for now, what we want to do is just understand that when we throw out the notes, the fourth note and the seventh note, when we throw those out the door, we get pentatonic. So if you look at this scale now, and this is, again, on the last page of your PDF, you're going to see this. Okay, when I play the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, if I was to take the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I threw those out the door, you wind up with one, two, three, four, five notes, and then you would again. And most of you have seen that before that pentatonic shape, right? So your diatonic is becoming pentatonic because we threw out the notes, the fourth note and the seventh note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm throwing out the notes F and B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I get it. And I get that usual pentatonic shape that you've probably seen a million times, right? So... Again, there's minor pentatonic and how all these things are relating to minor. And for me, that was one of the biggest things that I ever learned. Okay. First thing was understanding chromatic. Okay. Second thing was understanding the diatonic scale, which I've shown you. The third thing for me was seeing, understanding the shortcuts like the one, four, five, and two, three, six, and all those sorts of things. And then the biggest thing that, again, almost had me ending my guitar player career was all of these scales. And it was just all just a huge ball of confusion for me. And once I figured it all out and streamlined it in my brain, that's what I teach is, is how to think about minor and how to think about modes and all these other things to make it make sense in your head. And that's what music theory is all, made easy is all about. Okay. So everybody, thank you so much for taking all of this time out. I certainly hope at, le at the very least you explore it. Click on the learn more button, learn more about music theory made easy. Please let me know. Um, what you think about it. I can see already that people have been purchasing it. I can see it on, on my screen here. So I want to say to you, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you so much for taking the leap in and, and looking at music theory made easy. Um, if you can, please post up here on the chat and let us know why it is that you decided to take this jump into to grabbing music theory made easy and what you think it's going to do for you. And please remember, it's no risk. Okay, you buy it and it doesn't serve your needs you get a refund. You get a hold of us and we'll, we'll re refund you your money for this thing if it, if it doesn't seem like it's going to work. But 
I got a feeling it is, okay? Because there's just a lot of really great stuff in here to try and kind of get you to that next level. So thank you for everybody that's buying this thing right now. I appreciate that, and I appreciate your posts, okay? I can see Jane just posted there. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep, Maria, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. So people are buying this thing. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is so awesome. I'm glad that you're enjoying this. I hope this made sense. Music theory, certainly in a webinar, isn't always the most exciting thing. Okay. Because you got to sit and listen to me talk and explain things. It's not as flashy as like a lick thing or something like that. But guys, it makes all the difference in the world to learn this stuff. Okay. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate the fact that you are here with us. And, uh, you know, you've taken time out of your day or your evening to, to, to do this. And I hope you've learned something from this. Please make sure that once you've purchased this, um, you go sign up for that uh, Facebook Guitar Zoom community page. And, um, you know, start posting some things, questions, you know, product or uh, uh, productivity videos of you as you keep moving forward in your stuff. Show people what you've been doing, okay? Gain the confidence to... To, to be able to play, you know, record yourself on a video and, and don't be don't be shy. You know, show everybody else what you've been working on. It's just it's just a really awesome thing. So everybody, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time for this webinar. Thank you for taking the time for checking out Music Theory Made Easy. For those of you that are purchasing this, thank you so, so much. Um, I don't know exactly how long the um, the purchasing is available after this webinar. Um, I think it's like five hours or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But you do have some time to think about this a little bit and decide what you want to do. But please, I'm encouraging you, take the next step and start exploring. Get your, get your playing up to that next level so you are more confident with yourself and you're more ready to do some writing or some improv improvisation with a band or whatever it might be. Take it to that next level. So I'm not going to keep you any longer. I know you've got a million other things to get to in your world, but thank you so much. God bless you, and, um, and just thank you so much for taking time out. So if you've got any questions, get a hold of us here at Guitar Zoom, and we'd be happy to help you. You know, we've got uh, um, some people that are on the chat that have been helping you up to this point, and they're still going to be available for a little while afterwards. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and we'll talk to you soon, and take care.